on the phone we have a former great played at the University of Kansas and also with the San Diego Chargers. Pro fo- I mean, you should be in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. John Hado, how you doing, John? I'm doing great, thank you. How are you doing today? Good. I was just talking to your ex-teammate uh, the other day, Lance Hallworth, and we were talking about you, and he agreed that you should be in the Hall. Well, I, I, he and my mother both agree on that. <laughs> <laughs> They're two yeah. smart people. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, yeah, it's you know it's a long shot deal for everybody, but except a few of the great ones. And uh, anyway, it's uh, well, it's going to be what it'll be. I'm not worried about it. How did you end up playing at the University of Kansas for uh, college? Well, I was actually I was born and raised in Lawrence, Kansas, where the university is located, and uh, I was kind of a Jayhawk fan all my life prior to to high school and everything, and. Uh, but actually, I'd committed to Oklahoma coming out of Lawrence High, and uh, Jack Mitchell came in and uh, as a new head coach that same time frame that I was coming out of high school. And he talked me into staying, thank goodness, and uh, worked out pretty good. So, Bud Wilkinson and, and the, the Sooners couldn't sway you? Well, I did uh, early, and uh, Bud was a heck of a nice guy, and he offered me a scholarship, and he was the top coach in the country at that time. And uh, I, when he offered that scholarship, I said yes, and because uh, it was Oklahoma. And uh, by the time Jack Mitchell came in, he was he played at Oklahoma, and uh, he was an All-American down there, and he convinced me that I'd be better off staying in Kansas. And, which down deep inside, I think that's what I really want to do anyway. But it worked out good. I know that for sure. Because you were a running back when you started in college, and then you became a quarterback your last year. That's true. I was a running back all the way from eighth grade to my uh, sophomore through my sophomore year at KU. And and uh, but the, the switch to quarterback wasn't that big a deal at that time because we were everybody was running options and throwing the ball about five times a game, that kind of thing. And uh, so it uh, it wasn't that big a move, really, other than running the team and, and uh, having the bark signal, which I'd never had to do before. But I, I joined up pretty good on it, and it worked out pretty good. Did you enjoy playing offense or defense more? Oh, offense. Defense is all right, but uh, offense was uh, – my cup of tea, and I uh, really enjoyed it. And it worked out again. It worked out pretty good. I mean, not many players could go from being an All-American at running back one year, and then an All-American at quarterback the next year. But like you said, I mean, it was a different game back then. But did you get the pass at all when you were at um, Kansas, or was it pretty much just running the option? Well, no, we threw we threw it uh, five or ten times a game, and. Uh, and uh, I got to throw it quite a bit. But uh, anyway, uh, uh, the thing that happened really in the spring ball, well, one day we were throwing drop back passes in spring spring ball, and uh, Don Flosterman, who was the head scout for the Chargers, had to beat him that day. And he saw something in my arm that uh, indicated I probably could play pro quarterback. So thank goodness he was there that day. And because we didn't throw many drop back passes at any time. But uh, that particular day, he was there and saw it and saw my arm or whatever he saw and worked out pretty good. Now, on defense, you do still remember a 98-yard interception against Texas Christian, don't you? Yes. uh, And what happened on that play was I can still remember that play. He faked me out on a play action, a TCU quarterback, and – I took, I took a step in and I saw a play action. I said, "Oh, I'm in trouble." And I stepped back and he underthrew it a little bit, and I picked it off and went 98 yards. So it worked out pretty good. <laughs> and that record still stands at Kansas. You what? That record still stands at Kansas. Is the longest yeah. interception return. Well, you know, you got to be about 100 yards to beat it. <laughs> <laughs> not, not many situations get in. You, you, know, you don't get in that many situations. Could you still make that run today? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I could I barely make a 10-yard run. 
you know, if you can spread it out over two days, you might be able to. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I think I think you also hold the Kansas record for the longest punt with a 94-yarder against Oklahoma. Yeah, that's true. It's, it still stands as a record in the conference, too, I think. And, uh, anyway, I, I, it was one of those days, uh, like you hit a two-iron really good, and you don't know how you did it. And I, I punted this thing and uh, took off like a rocket and carried a long way, and they tackled him right when he got the ball. So that, that cut it down pretty good. When you played in the college all-star game, was your coach uh, the great former uh, Brown, Otto Graham? Yes, Otto was our coach, and uh, he was a great guy. We had a good time with him, and uh, it, was, uh, it was a fun experience. We got to play in Soldier Field, and it was it was a really good deal for everybody. Who did you play against? Do you remember that game? Packers, yeah. We went, we went against the Packers. And I remember coming out of the huddle the first play of the game, and I uh, looked over there, and I saw Nisky and, and all those guys that have been on that great – Back your defense and uh, made me a little nervous. I have to admit. <laughs> One game that I remember from your college career happened in 1960. I, I grew up in St. Louis and I listened to the game on the radio. And Missouri came in, the number one team in the nation, and they left that afternoon on the losing end of a 23 to seven outcome. You remember that game pretty fondly. Well, that's the that's the game of the century around here, and uh, I remember every play just about on that. I know that uh, Bert Cohen, our great running back uh, that had transferred up from T- TCU, he he gained uh, out of a total of 100 and some yards running and passing, and and caught a touchdown pass, and he was back of the week and. Uh, in the nation that week, I mean, he played so good. It was great. We beat him. They were number one. We were like five or six or something. We we got them though. Yeah, and I, I just remember you, Cone, Curtis McClinton, and then I guess also uh, we had Doyle Schick. I mean, it's like it's like you had an abundance of of uh, talented running backs. I mean, it's that. Well, we it, we did. We had. Uh, Actually, that one year we had three number one picks uh, in the uh, in the draft. I was the one with the or excuse me, I was the one with Detroit, and uh, and Bert Cohen was the number one with uh, San Diego, and uh, Clinton was number one with the Chiefs. And uh, that was an interesting thing because they had redshirt drafting then, and and Bert and Curtis had redshirted each year, so. They were, uh, but they were number one picks, and uh, we had three number one picks out of that backfield. How did you end up signing with the Chargers and not the other league? Well, uh, Detroit wanted me to be a running back, and they said I'd be another Paul Horning, and I knew that that, that wasn't true because uh, I didn't kick field goals, and and I know I didn't like blocking those linebackers, so I, I and I wanted to play quarterback anyway. It was the best position to be in. And Sid Gilman wanted me to play quarterback, so that's where I went, and I worked out pretty good there too. Gilman had the reputation of being uh, a great offensive mind. What sort of coach was he? Oh, he was great. He's a workaholic and. But he was a passing coach, and that's what he really worked on most of the time. And, you know, we were throwing that West Coast offense, but we, there wasn't a name for it yet. And uh, we, we had the, the two, three-step drop, the five-step, and the, and the seven-step drops in, a, in before anybody else was doing that. And uh, the depth of the routes were timing routes. and that, That's what the West Coast offense really was. And... Uh, and Walsh even said it. He said that uh, Sid Gilman invented the West Coast offense, no doubt about it. Now you had a young assistant on your staff, Nell Davis. How did he help you as a quarterback? Oh, he was great. He, he'd always help me uh, timing-wise, throwing the ball and and uh, things of that nature. He was a receiver coach. He was coaching all work. And uh, we worked together all the time. It was uh, Al and Sid and I and Lance and and Gary Garrison, who was a great receiver, too. And uh, we, we just had a great offense. We really did. Had Keith Lincoln, Paul Lowe, 
and a great line in front of me. That really made the difference, of course. Yeah, you can't forget Rod Mix. No, no, Ronnie Jack is a, he was a man, and he was all pro every year, and uh, he was a great player. And we had Ernie Wright, Walt Sweeney. Walt Sweeney was probably the best guard that ever played, in my opinion. And and uh, Sam Gennais in our center. We, we had a great bunch of guys, really did. Now, your first couple of seasons, um, Tobin Rope was the starter. How, how difficult was it basically watching from the sidelines? Well, I'll tell you, it, was, uh, it wasn't any fun, that's for sure. But uh, Tobin was a great guy, and uh, we were roommates, and he, he helped me a lot uh, as far as uh, growing as a quarterback on and off the field. And he uh, he was just a heck of a good guy and, and a heck of a quarterback, obviously. So, it, But he helped me grow faster. If he hadn't been there, I wouldn't have been as fast as, as far as growing as a quarterback. When you won the championship, I heard that uh, you guys offered to play the Bears but in 63, but Hallis wanted no part of that. Would you have enjoyed playing against the Bears? Well, yeah, that would have been a lot of fun and uh, been an interesting game, I'm sure. But uh, uh, and they weren't ready to get together yet in the two leagues, so that's probably what happened. But that championship game, uh, Lance said that basically you could have beat any team that year. Yeah, we could have. We we really felt that way anyway because we were so explosive offensively, and uh, we had uh, we just had a great team. And you know, anybody could score from anywhere. We had Keith Lincoln and Low running backs, and they could really fly. And of course, Lance was a human rocket, and, and Garrison and Don Norton and uh, Jock McKinnon are tied in. And we had a lot of speed, team speed, and uh, we could we could go anybody catch one. They could take it all away from anywhere. Yeah, I, I just remember those AFL games. It, it seemed like it was offense, offense, offense. But you, you had some guys who could also play a little defense on that team. Well, we did. You can't win a championship without defense. And, uh, we had a good defense. Chuck, Chuck Noll was there then at that time, and uh, he, he was. A, you could tell he was going to be a great coach, and he obviously was probably the best ever, one of the best ever. How vital was uh, Lance, Lance Allworth to your success? Pardon me? How vital was Lance Allworth to your success? <laughs> well, probably about 85%. He uh, he was such a great player and a great athlete. And, and uh, you know, he could be running along and, and uh, running a 9-500, jump five feet straight up in the air and catch the ball. And he, he was just a great athlete. And... Uh, he always could catch it. He'd, he, uh, he'd come over the sideline and say, John, I got a slant, an out, a post, a corner, and I, then I can go deep anytime you're ready. I said, Lance, you're getting double coverage all the time. What do you mean you got all those routes? And he he said, I don't know, but I'll catch it. And, you know, he, there's times I threw in the coverage just to give him an opportunity to catch it, and he, he definitely could do that. So, But he's the only one. The only one. The only one who could stop uh, Lance was Tom Landry and uh, the Cowboys there because he said that they wouldn't throw to him there. And he told uh, Bob Hayes, listen, you run and I'll catch it. And he goes, no, I'm going to catch it. You're going to block. That's what exactly what he said. Lance told me that story. and Because uh, he was singled up all the time and uh, they still wouldn't throw him the ball. So I don't know. Uh, different philosophy, different times. Was there another team that gave you a lot of trouble when it came to throwing the ball to Lance? Well, the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers, they had the best defense in history of football, probably, and uh, that, that was one team. Uh, the Chiefs would give me trouble every once in a while, but uh, there wasn't too many people that gave us trouble all the time with, with Lance because he could beat the double coverage and uh, – I tell you, one guy that did hurt him more than anybody was Willie Brown from Oakland. He, he, that guy was a great corner too. He'd play that bump and run and knock Lance off his stride a little bit, but uh, they probably broke even through the years. Did you have a favorite game in the NFL? A favorite game? 
I tell you what, I I, I had, had a lot of good games, and uh, I think one of the biggest ones when we beat the Rams in the NFL, we were playing exhibition games, and uh, the first game, the first year they beat us, and then they came down the second year and we beat them in, in the San Diego Stadium, and that that was big for, for me anyway. With the Pearson Forsen? Yeah, when the Rams were going good too, and. Uh, they had all the good ones, Deacon Jones and uh, all those guys. And uh, Roman Gabriel was a quarterback, who was a good friend of mine. He was a great quarterback. We had a lot of fun. How surprising was it when, uh, before the 73 season, you, you got traded to the Los Angeles Rams? No, I was ready for that. Uh, <clears throat> they had the Senate left and got relieved of duty, and uh, – they had coaches that were coming and going, and uh, and they got into that drug business a little bit, and uh, I wanted out. I, Gene Klein was the owner, and I, after after the Pittsburgh game, I went in. I said, I have got to be traded and get out of here. And he said, We're working on it. We know how you feel. So I was looking forward to that. And Don Klosterman, the guy that signed me up with the Chargers, was the president and general manager of the Rams. So. All that went together and worked out pretty good. What was it like playing for the Rams? Oh, I loved it. It was great. We had, I was getting the ball back every three downs because we had a great defense. And and uh, Don Slosson was there and Carol Rosenblum was the owner. And uh, we just had a great team and had a lot of fun. We got in the playoffs the first year with Chuck Knox. He was a great guy and a great coach. And, uh, we just say uh, it was a good two years for me. It really was. And then you end up playing in Green Bay, where the coach was Dan Devine, who who was the coach in 1960 for Missouri. No doubt about it. I, I, we talked about that quite a bit and had a few laughs. But uh, uh, he 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 gave up a lot of draft choices to get me. And I didn't like it at the time because I was on a great team and uh, I, I didn't want to go to that northern territory and where the weather was bad and, and they weren't doing that well and we, I was on a championship team. But uh, it gave up a lot of draft choices and uh, just the Rams couldn't avoid it. And they, Plus, the Rams had James Harris, who was a great quarterback. So it just worked out the best probably overall. Who in their right mind wants to leave the San Diego, Southern California weather for Wisconsin? Well, uh, it was all right till the winter hit because it was mid-season. It hadn't really hit yet. And uh, when that winter, winter hit, it was a different ball game. That ball was like a rock and uh, it had no give to it when you gripped it. And uh, it was, you couldn't stay outside over a half hour in practice because of the cold and it was just a different, different situation. That's all. But I tell you one thing: the Green Bay Packer fans are the best in the country, and uh, they, uh, they really, they didn't like me early because of the trades and all that. But uh, I didn't, I didn't like it either. So, but then we got going, and they, they I think they got, so they respected me a little bit enough to, when I beat, I, I didn't beat them. We beat Minnesota, and it. One of the games that first year, and that was that was big for the fans, so that helped a lot. And then after Green Bay, you got traded to the Oilers. Yeah, Bob Phillips was a good friend of mine, the head coach of the Oilers, and and uh, then or uh, uh, Bart Starr was the coach then, and he uh, he needed to do that. Get he got Len Dickey. They needed to get a younger guy and get it going, and uh, Dickey did a great job. And I got to go with Bum, my old buddy, because he was defensive coordinator of the Chargers for years when I was out there. We got to be very close. And uh, anyway, uh, that's how it worked, and it worked out good. Yeah. How did you end up? Dickie was a Kansas State guy. How, how could a Kansas State guy beat out a Kansas guy? Well, they, I don't think the Packers and the Oilers had any clue about that. They didn't care about that. <laughs> that wasn't a factor at all. <laughs> But, uh, you know, it's funny you talk about Lynn Dickey. Uh, Pepper Rogers was coach of Kansas, and I could come back in the offseason and help coach spring ball. In those days, you could do that and recruit. And Lynn Dickey was from Osawatomie, Kansas, and he was the number one kid in the state. 
and uh, I went down to get him, and he he really wanted to come to KU, and and uh, like in December, he he was saying I'm going to be there, but I want to be recruited a little bit and see what's going on. And, and Pepper Rogers, the head coach at KU, said I want to know today if he's coming or not. I said, Coach, he's coming, but we just we just let him let him be recruited, and we'll get him. And I went down and told Vicky that, and he said, I, well, that does it. I'm not coming to kill you. So I said, that's what happened. That's the truth. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, he, he, he sort of put Kansas State on the map at that time because Kansas State yeah, was, he was so, so, so bad for so long. Well, he was a great quarterback, my Lord. He, he could throw the heck out of it. No, I see Lynn every once in a while. He's in Kansas City. Good to see him once in a while anyway. He's a good guy, really good guy. How did you get into coaching? Oh, I always wanted to be a coach anyway, coming out of college. And uh, and I just had an opportunity, i tell you, playing pro ball and being with Sid Gillen helped a lot uh, with getting a job. And I came back to KU and coached here uh, for a couple of years. And Malabasi called me, wanted me to be the offensive coordinator for the Rams, which I did do that. And uh, I don't know. I got to coach John Elway. I coached Denver the first year, and I and uh, we got Elway in there, and I got to coach him his rookie year, which I said that right then he's gonna be the greatest quarterback I ever played. And he, uh, in my opinion, he has been. And you coach another great quarterback when you're head coach of Los Angeles in the USFL with uh, Steve Young. Uh, no question about it. He was a great athlete and a heck of a guy, and. Uh, he made things happen big time. He, he he was just a great athlete. He could throw it. He could run. He could. He was fast too, and he was smart. He, he was just an obviously a great player. Guys like Elway and Young make you an awfully good coach, don't they? Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> everybody thought I was a genius there for a while. <laughs> Did you get back to San Diego often for Charger games? No, I really haven't been. I uh, thought about six years ago we had a re- big reunion that I went to, but that's about it. I, I just don't know anybody out there anymore. And, uh, you know, everybody's retired or whatever, and uh, new ownership. And it's, uh, that's just the way it is. That's the way life goes. And I'm having a good time here in Kansas and uh, semi retired, and, and things are good. So another great Kansas player was Gail Sayers. Did you kind of help recruit him to Kansas? No, I wasn't here then, and uh, Jack Mitchell got him. He, he, I was playing there, and uh, he, he came in my senior year. He was a freshman, and the freshman couldn't play. And uh, he was highly talented, obviously. And uh, we scrimmaged the freshman the first uh, time we, in, the, in the fall of the fall season, and uh, Gail, uh, everybody said, we're going to knock the hell out of Gail Sayers. Get him. I'm tired of reading about him. Well, he took off on an end run, and I took a bad angle. And the uh, time I got to that angle ending, he was around the corner and gone. He, he ran for a touchdown the first time he touched the ball and as a freshman in the scrimmage against the varsity. He was great. You can see that. There's no question about it. He was one of the greatest of all time. He hadn't got hurt. He hadn't been the all-timer. And I, I just remember him in college. It's like any time the ball was handed to him, it didn't matter where on the field it was, he could be off for a touchdown. He, he was that good. Yeah, no doubt about it. He was he was a great, great, great player and a good guy. I could see him once in a while. He comes back every, every once in a while. What do you think? Is, it, Ailes from Omaha. How how did he get out of the state of Nebraska to end up in in Lawrence? Well, you got to realize that Jack Mitchell is one of the greatest recruiters of all time, and uh, he's the one that got him. Jack, uh, he just had a way about himself, and uh, everybody liked him, and he was very impressive and made sense all the time. And every time he talked about football and things that, that you cared about the most, but that's what happened. Gail, he got Gail the same way he got me and many other guys. Is Kansas football ever going to be as big as Kansas basketball? Uh, I hope so, but I seriously doubt it, right now, especially right now. No, it's not at all, no. 
but but in recent years the football team has enjoyed some success. Where well, uh, yeah, when Mangino was here. We had it going, and uh, he did a great job. And we were back in business big time. And he and the athletic director got in a big argument, and uh, I don't know what all happened, but uh, he was relieved after being coach of the year in the nation. Went to the Orange, won the Orange Bowl, and uh, I don't know, it was a very political situation. Thank you so much for your time, and you should be in the Hall of Fame. Well, you work on that for me, will you? <laughs> I will. We got to we got to get you in. We got to get Jerry Kramer in, and we've got to get um, um, Tom Flores in as a coach. Well, yeah, I didn't know Kramer wasn't in. I thought he'd be in there. No, he was one of the top 50 players for the 50th anniversary, and he's the only one of them not in. For some reason, they won't put him in. Well, politics, see what happens. <laughs> exactly. If you could put Bradshaw in a quarterback, and if they could put Greasy, you were better than both of them. Well, thank you. I appreciate it.